Hello everyone and welcome back to my podcast. My name is Darren Connell and this is Straight White Whale. We are on episode 33, unbelievable, and this is a very warm sunny day in Glasgow today. That warm we've got the podcast studio door opened, so if any mad Glaswegian wildlife walk past the door, they might be a wee bit confused. So... <laughs> But the door needs to be opened because it's fucking roasting, man. Uh, even outside, it's roasting. Um, so before we get into the podcast, I want to give the sponsor a shout out. I've took a couple of notes. It's Mr. Junk. Mr. Junk is a waste removal business based in Glasgow, ran by my good friend Ross. So if you've not got a car and you can't take your rubbish to the skip, or if you just can't be bothered, get in touch with Mr. Junk. He can remove garden rubbish, uh, stuff that's in your loft, waste, anything at all. All the information will pop up on the screen when you click into the podcast. The link and his poster and his number will be there. So if you can't be bothered or if you're just busy, get in touch. and He'll sort out your junk. Perfect, mate. Is you know what I love about? And I'm, this is new. I don't do the sponsors. So, but Glasgow City Council are a fucking joke. Yes. And I live in, uh, I, I've got like, I put out like fucking, I, d- I don't know why, I'm just a fucking messy bastard, I think, but put out like fucking four or five bags a week and I've got one wheelie bin and they, they only empty my wheelie bin once a fortnight. So every week, bit of money, somebody comes, Mr. Junk takes your bags away, takes them to the dump for you. It's a fucking lifesaver. You don't get rats. Like I stay in a tenement mm-hmm. and there's rats and all sorts if the, the bins just lie there. And uh, I may, I, I use the service for just general. It's not even like couches and obviously it'll take away like couches and TVs and all the household stuff. Even just like the council don't fucking come and take your garden waste. Yeah. I use shit like that. Yeah. Uh, sort of private uh, people like Mr. Junk. So uh, it comes in handy, mate. And that's why businesses like mr junk are doing so well now Aye. and that's why they're so popular because glasgow city council are a bit shite mm-hmm. so i've used i've not used mr junk i've used a similar business and it's easy it's just like an uber but for rubbish if that makes sense Aye. i got an uber here the day because it was too hot and the <laughs> guy gave us a sweetie mm-hmm. i was like i'll give him a pound tip for that but then that pound probably paid for the bag of sweets. It's a cycle of pure. What kind of sweet was it? It was a sugar-free War Weathers original. Uh, yeah, which I also found out the other night. I don't know how it happened. I dropped one in my coffee. A wee bit of milk. Banging. Unbelievable. Toffee latte. Aye, to the point that I was like texting my mates. My, oh my god, man. You need to go in a shop, right? Get Weathers Originals. Everybody's married with careers and jobs. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Get Amazon Prime on Weather Originals. So this is episode 33. It's been a week since I've been last in. I want to thank everybody for the comments. A lot of people are getting in touch, man. It's a wee community. We've built a wee community here. That's it's nice, very, man. very good. Um, I know that we've got a toxic relationship. Well, me towards you. <laughs> Fuck okay. I, I'm, in, I'm in love with you madly. <laughs> it's news to me. <laughs> I'm madly in love with you, pal. You've got a girlfriend, you've got a career, and I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, idolize me. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I feel like a horrendous cuck. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get to watch me shagging. <laughs> I wouldn't, that's how much of a cuck I am, though. I wouldn't even watch a shag. I'd like go and make tea and all that <laughs> while you're shagging. You would get the, you would get the post nut. <laughs> fucking refreshment ready for us so it's been a week since i've seen you a week since we've done the podcast how have you been mate i've been good mate what, what's been going on the last fucking week man um i was at i was at a uh, blind boy podcast live last night at the o2 academy is that the irish did mm-hmm. that wears a polybagney seed yes interesting look but yep great uh great podcast um he's very insightful um, and it was uh, Darren McGarvey was the, the guest and the conversation was fucking absolutely top notch. Um, but the O2 Academy, it was like um, general admission, but seated. And I was just like, really? 
can they put a fucking seat number and row in it? Do you know what I mean? And just so we know where we're fucking sitting. Yeah. It's a free for all. During the interval, I came back and there's two guys in the seats that mean my missus were fucking oh, sitting on. For fuck's sake. What's so the deal with the bar? Was the bar opened? No, the bar was closed during the performance. Um, but they they sold two pint, like fucking like a fucking two pint cup of beer. Yeah. Like what the fuck, man? I didn't even know that you could fucking sell. Did you no. have a couple? No, no, not at all, mate. I was out. Of the, oh fuck, man! I was out at the weekend. We could we could talk about that after a, a fucking um, uh, talk about last night. But went back to the seats. Two guys sitting there, and I'm like, oh, fuck. like guys, I know we don't have tickets and all that, but that's my jacket. We were sitting there, and the guy was like, one of the guys was looking at me like pure. Oh no! And the other guy was like, well. Would you want me to do? And I was like, go out my fucking seat. That's what I fucking want you to do. You're pricking the two of them. were just like, okay, big man. And just like toddled off. Nice. Sat down and felt terrible. But. Felt <laughs> <you're> terrible, man. <laughs> Fuck it. That's what they get. Clay <laughs> feathers get your arse tickled. Well, I suppose. But I mean, it was a fucking, I left my jacket. No, even like hanging over the back of the seat like you would normally. I put my jacket over the seat actually over covering the seat so uh-huh. they moved my jacket and sat down it's like come on a hey, fuck it was sold out as well so all the seats were taken so they've been standing up the back waiting for the interval and then i don't know man probably looked at me and thought i was a fucking fanny to be fair i, I get that, that a lot, mate. i get that i get that quite a bit yeah right uh, well they'll look at me people look at me and be like he looks like a big hipster mm-hmm. and then i'm just like don't fuck with me it and might then, be the beard I think it is, mate. They look at the beard and they do that. That cunt eats fucking... He's a vegan. Aye. <laughs> or, oh, what's the other shit? Brisket. <laughs> he he, sus- he subscribes to brisket YouTube channels. Aye. Fuck him. Craft beer lover. And they don't realise that you're unhinged. And... I'm a stabber. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Aye. That's a joke. That's a joke. But no, I went out at the weekend, right? And um, oh. I'm not a big drinker. Aye. Like I'm no, I'm no sober, but I am sober. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like um, I don't drink a lot. And I went out on Saturday night. Um, my missus was away up to Inverness for a rave, and I decided to have a wee wild weekend to myself. I went out with a couple of old mates, and got so fucked, man, it was unreal. Steaming. Like, oh, mate, I must have drank. I had three pints of like light beer, mm-hmm. like to ease myself in. Because the way that I like to sort of deal with a night out now is, see all this, like, we'll do this and we'll do that. I can't be fucked with that because it never works out. The place where you are planning on going, you turn up, it's too full, you want to go somewhere else. So I'm just like, let's just meet somewhere and we'll just go off the cuff. See if we go somewhere and we have a couple of pints and somebody's deciding I'm not feeling it and they want to get him, that's fine. Uh-huh. Let's not plan this mental night. And it's always, like, really good. It means, like, you like have a sort of more relaxed time. But I had, like, three, um, three pints of, like, sort of 4% lager. And then one of my mates was pure. I'm going to go and get a packet of cigarettes. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm an ex smoker. So when I have a drink, I'm like, get, get the fucking, get the club. Club fucking Marlboro, Marlboro Red. Like pure, inject the fucking nicotine Aye. into my veins. So I must have drank. We went for there. We went to Slouch on Bath Street. I must have had 10 white Russians. Oh. Easy. So I had three, this is me having no drank. Any sort of substantial amount of alcohol in well over a year. Fucking three pints of lager, but ten white Russians, and smoked for a full pack of cigarettes. So I woke up on Sunday, mate. I was fucking dying. I must have vomited about fucking ten times before oh. I could muster up the energy to go and get food, which was the saviour. And then, mate, I'm I'm waking up in sweats even this morning. Fucking Friday, I was out last Saturday night, and I'm still waking up pure. I feel Aye. fucked, man. Shows you how much alcohol pure affects you. It fucks you. I was thinking last week, last night when I was at uh, the O2 Academy and, and my missus was like, do you want to get a beer? And I was like, ah, do you know what, man? I think I might be done with it. Yeah. Like, Aye. fully done with it, unless it is like a pint in a beer garden on a sunny day and, and yeah. like, see, other than that, see the binge drinking. <sighs> Mate, I was disgusted on Sunday. I was absolutely disgusted. Yeah. So, hangover I, from hell. And I'm still hungover. Yeah. I woke up this morning, I still had a wee bit of a sore head. 
I woke up yesterday morning, I was covered in sweat, and I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, fucks your diet, fucks your sleep, fucks your skin, the dark thought center. That's right. what happened to me the last time I had a drink. I had a week hangover, a week long hangover, and then I went out for a cure. And after the cure, I was like, ah, nah, man. Right, I'm done with it, po- it does, it poisons you. It's a poison. It is. That's what I said to my missus on Sunday. She was texting me, she was coming home from Inverness. And um, she was like, how do you feel? I was like, I poisoned myself last night. Like, literally, yeah. there's there's no other way to actually say it. It's just green water that I'm fucking puking up. There's yes. nothing in my stomach. And every time I lay down, I just like pure, I'm going to fucking puke again. I was just stoning pure. So, yeah. aye, man. I think it's like, well, I'll tell you what, like, I'm not finished with alcohol. I'm finished abusing it. Yeah. But then what I did have a thought about is like, what do you do with your mates on a Saturday? Do you know what I mean? Like, how do you, how do you still have that social life and connection to people that really want, that really enjoy doing that, that enjoy going out and abusing alcohol? Your, f- your friends get used to it. Um, I had a couple of non-alcohol Heinekens. After a while, see if you just announce to your pals that you're not going to drink, they get used to it. Right. And, and for the first couple of months or weeks it's weird and you always get that oh have a drink have a shandy see all that shit eventually goes and even my pals who were the biggest pain in the asses regarding that stuff don't even say to me like oh do you miss it or that kind of shit so that doesn't happen so good times ahead well mate i've i've no drank with any sort of regularity for about eight or nine years mm-hmm. but what i do have is what happened on saturday like if i'm gonna go out for a drink it goes one or two ways i have a couple of drinks and i tend to have a pint like just have a pint and i i find myself getting tired and i want to just go home and get a munch or i put my foot on the fucking accelerator and it's yeah. just like a ridiculous amount of alcohol is consumed yeah um i mean 10 shots of vodka and three pints of beer might be nothing to some people mm-hmm. mate I fucked me up don't remember getting him a fuck all did you enjoy it did you have a good night? Oh, i had a great night mate yeah i had a fucking great night you must have needed it mate you worked very hard I you work hard i mean i hard. don't know if that's an excuse to actually just go and fucking harm yourself and what i'm saying i think i need to it's for a certain section of friends it's either i don't see them or we go out and we drink and i think i need to figure out what, did, what can i do with these people that isn't going out and just bevying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe go for a game of pool or... Axe throwing. Bowling or aye or shit like that. Where you're like... Oh, that shit that wasn't about when we were younger. Escape rooms. Aye. Laser Quest, remember that? Oh, mate. I loved Laser Quest. Right, we've got a list here that I would like to go through and hopefully we can get through it and maybe get something for TikTok. Nice. Because yeah. anytime we are putting a clip up, it's going well. Um, maybe the uncle story last week never went as well as <laughs> a bit dark. <laughs> it never went as well as the comedy ones, but everybody was like, "Fucking hell, mate, that's grim as fuck." Hope you're all right. I was like, "I find it funny." Well, I thought that the, the reaction that you got and social media in general, other than TikTok, like the Instagram post, the Twitter post, and stuff, I thought there was loads of reaction to that. So yeah, maybe the TikToks for like short funny bits but if there's any sort of like more serious stuff we can use it on twitter and yes. on instagram or whatever actually i'm kind of blown away with my social media recently the random acts of kindness of complete strangers that have seen me do stand up or listen to the podcast um last week i was really stressed about greenock i've done greenock on friday let's talk about that and the build up to it was p- possibly one of the most stressful and depressing experiences of my life and it caused i don't know if he's watched it last week but my neck seized up like completely seized up i had to come into the studio now me and paul like i class me and paul as mates now but like i went and my neck was fucked we're setting up a podcast studio and i'm like paul can you grab my neck and just squeeze it like like squeezing the pressure out my neck i was so like tense tense i so I booked a massage after that um, and I went up to a place in Woodland Road called Woodlands Herbs and Spices and it's right beside Mrs. Falafel and 
the guy was giving us a, ma- a massage and I was greeting. Like, the, the pressure was just so much, but it was like relief. Mm-hmm. It wasn't pain. I was just like, thank fuck Aye. he's getting in about this. So I, and I went <clears> on my social media last week. Uh, ticket sales weren't very good, to be honest. Um, it's been quite a stressful experience when stuff that is no working and it's no your fault. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Like, so everything that I was supposed to do, I'd done. And then people that are supposed to be helping me are no helping me. Aye. Mm-hmm. And it led for me to have this mini breakdown on my social media last week and flat out just say, ticket sales are terrible. Um, no posters have been put up. It wasn't the venue's fault. It wasn't Greenock's fault. Mm-hmm. Beacon Arts Centre was absolutely lovely. The venue was stunning. The manager was amazing with me. She was a lovely person. And the gig ended up amazing. But see, when you're giving somebody 20% to kind of work with you and they're not working with you, it was just a horrible experience. Mm-hmm. But when I tweeted, look, ticket sales are not going that well. How are, how are they supposed to go well when there's no posters in the town? and No promotion? No promotion, no. So it, in my term, I think it went viral. I mean, people were retweeting. See the amount of retweets it got? It was 100 seats. I think I sold about 60 tickets. Considering there was absolutely no promotion whatsoever, uh-huh. and that was just through my social media, I was blown away with Aye, it. mate. See, if I had a team behind me that supported me for day one, that would have sold it. I 100% agree with you, mate. It would have sold it. Plus, I don't, I mean, I'm not caring if it sells it financially. It's just, I need a crowd. And it was such a lovely gig, man. See, I went up and uh, it was so weird. It's such a weird experience, Paul, because see, before it, I'm like shaking. I'm scared. I feel sick with nerves. Right. And then I get on stage and I just do that. And it's just amazing. And then after stage, I'm back to fucking being a gargoyle. Uh But Scott Scott Agnew was my support act. I asked him to to do 20 minutes. And he was a bit of a greedy boy. He'd done 30 minutes, but that's all right. I don't mind because he was funny as fuck. Mm -hmm. And I'm still paying him the same as well. So I'm like, do whatever you want, mate. And he was funny as fuck. So see the support that I got from like you friends social media people and people that are in the comedy circuit it was unbelievable right. so that's restored my faith in humanity and it's took away uh a, a wee bitterness that i had like how come things are not working out for me or how come i'm not getting that or how come i don't get a chance when really people support you man and people love you mm-hmm. it's just that people are always li- they're living their life and they're caught up in their own shit just like I'm caught up in my own shit. But when you truly need help, people will help you, man. I think that the bigger point of that is is that see if you truly do need help, you need to ask for it. Like you're saying, like everybody that you know has got their own shit going on and they don't live inside your head. You know what's going on in your life and you're hoping that somebody pops their head up and goes, I'll help. When I think the reality of the world, do I think that this is right? I mean, right or wrong on this? The reality is, is that sometimes you need to be like, I'm struggling. Now, last week you were saying, I'm struggling to sell tickets to this gig. And it's no your fault because the promotion just never fucking happened. Um, But to, to feel that sort of like response for people that you know and don't know, yeah, more importantly, I think, um, is incredible. And go for like what, we were talking fucking under 30 tickets sold at the start of a week. A couple of posts on a social on your social media to doubling the ticket sales. And like you're saying, if a poster had went up a couple of weeks earlier, the gig would have probably fucking sold it. I think that's amazing. And it mm. must be so reassuring to you to be like, right, fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't need you don't need to give twenty percent. No. To somebody to book the beacon. You could just date yourself and promote it yourself yeah. and make sure that the posters go. Especially somebody that doesn't give a fuck. And again, I need to stress the Beacon Art Centre was 100% amazing with me. But it was like, 
it was like a former Chinese whispers. So like the the guy that I'm supposed to be working with is no communicating with me. He's no communicating with the venue. So me and the venue are like that to each other. What's happening? We are starting to get annoyed with each other because it's this guy's fault. Mm -hmm. But the beacon, I'm no bad mouth in the beacon. It was a beautiful venue. If I ever get a chance to go back, I will return. Um, it was lovely, man, and it was a great gig as well. Like, uh, I what a start! It was just such a lovely start, and it was the same night as Ed Sheeran and stuff. So it was like, Kate Carnage to get sixty people in was uh, was good. A good result. How did the actual gig go? Like your performance and the crowd reaction and stuff. Do you know it was quite funny, right? See, because of the lack of promotion, mm -hmm. um, not because of the beacon. Uh, obviously, it's a Betty White reference, right? So there's a Golden Girls poster. There's nothing really that says anything about the show apart from Bobby from Scott Squad. Right. So I gen there was a lot of gay people there, right? <laughs> Really? Scott Agnew's Scott, gay, right? Aye, of course, Scott right. Agnew's Scott, gay. like a pure Scottish comedy aye. gay icon. So he had gay mates there, but I think there was a couple of gay people there just because they thought it was like a Golden Girls thing. And I think maybe they <laughs> thought it was like a drag night or something. Right. So I went up. There was a lot of Scott Squad fans there as well, expecting Bobby. And I went up and I was in absolute relentless, just dark humour. I don't want to give away my material, but like complete opposite of Bobby for Scott Squad. Uh -huh. And but don't get me wrong, people uh really enjoyed it. And it was such a mixed bunch, such a like gay guys, old women, um army. There was a couple of army veterans there, and there was a, a full blown smackhead in there as well, gouching at the back. So I, your people then. That's the type of <laughs> crowd that I get. <laughs> but I, it was amazing. And if you're, if you're listening and you've been, I want to thank you for coming. I also just want to thank people in general for being nice. Thank you for being my friend. But see my mates during all that. Some of your mates, they your fucking tits in, man. I'm in a WhatsApp group, right, mm -hmm. with my pals. And see when you're going through something that stressful, that's when horrible thoughts in your head mm -hmm. like thoughts that are no normal like why am i doing this should i've got a trade i should get a real job i'm no good enough all that type of stuff Back to the trolleys exactly mm -hmm. and when i'm saying this during a group chat saying nobody's retweeting my stuff nobody's helping me my mate's just like ah, okay, it would be all right just get on with it it'll be funny and then he changed the subject by saying does anybody um, judge me for still liking Kevin Spacey? Because you can say what you want, right? But see House of Cards? House of Cards was fucking brilliant. <laughs> and I'm like that with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it, takes a certain <laughs> it takes a certain type of psychopath to hear about a... Uh, uh, a world-renowned actor raping children and think, oh, no, that means the next season of House of Cards is going to be fucked. Yeah. That's a psycho. Like, I would say to your mate, I don't know who that is, mm -hmm. seek help. Aye, seek <laughs> help. I mean, he won't listen to the podcast, but I've got other pals I know that, I know they try to be nice, but they're just like, you've you, you just got to get on with it, haven't you? Mm. My, my brother's like that, right? Swear to God, my brother's like that. Uh, I remember, no Jerry, my uncle that died, it was Jerry's brother died, right? Right. And when he died, everybody was gutted, right? I think I've said this on a podcast. I swear to God, man, the cunt wasn't even in the coffin yet. And my brother was like that. Could be worse, eh? What? His body's not even called yet, mate. Aye. How could it how could it be worse for your uncle he's dead? He does it all the time, but like during COVID, I lost my hair, I lost all my income, thirteen grand's worth of work or something. Back in with my mum and my dad, uh weight gain. And he's like that. Ah. But at least you've not got any wains and um there's a guy in my work that's got a BMW and he can't pay his BMW off. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about some fat random cunt 
in your work that I've never met in my life. I hope his fucking BMW explodes, man. <laughs> Speaking about k packs, Kevin Spacey, have you seen k packs? Who's, who's K-Pax? It's a film when he's an alien no. and he eats a full banana in it, unpeeled. An unpeeled <laughs> banana, that's the only thing I kind of, when Remember? people talk about Kevin Spacey, I'm like, well, he ate a fucking banana with the peel still on. Obviously, he's a beast. <laughs> and he enjoyed it as well. Did they actually do it? Aye. Ugh. I've got a... I've got a thing for the texture inside the skinny of a banana. Have you Aye. ever had like the wee sort of stringy bits stick and you, you get them? Oh, mm -hmm. man. What the fuck is that all about? Supposedly, if you smoke a banana peel, it gets you stoned. Ugh, I've heard this before. My pal tried it. Did you get stoned? Nah. nah. I don't think I've ever met anybody that got stoned after smoking dried banana peel. I've I'll, heard that. I also know someone in my school. I won't, I, won't, <laughs> I won't name him. But we all used to smoke fags behind the ice cream van. Mm -hmm. And this guy was a scaffy bastard, right? Never bought his own fags. Right. Always fucking poncing half cunts, right? And a bird that I know hated him, right? And she was like, I'm sick of him constantly asking me for shit. She rolled a one skinner, Rolly, mm -hmm. nay hash, obviously, and instead of tobacco, well, I think there was some tobacco in it, but she put hamster shit in it and <laughs> gave him the roll up, right? He was smoking the roll up and she done that. There's hamster shit in there. And we, like, we were crying with laughter as he was smoking it. Right. And he just done that. Don't give a fuck. And he oh, smoked it. Oh, mate. <laughs> fucking hamster shite pellets, man. And Aye. the fucking roll up. The smoke looked weird, man. It was like, see when the Pope dies, the kind of smoke that comes out the Vatican? Aye. That's the smoke that was coming out this one skinner. <laughs> oh, mate. But we did, mate. We, when I worked at McDonald's, there was a guy. So, when you, when I don't know if it's different now, but when I worked at McDonald's, you used to have to do night shifts. Mm-hmm clean the place and you would be on like a rotation so and it was you know very geared towards the men there wasn't very they didn't make like the young lasses going day fucking night shifts but you were on like a rotation you had to do like one every eight weeks or something like that and there was like a group of people that did the night shifts but then there was like three or four of that all swapped out you were at like i said you did this not an eight week rotation there was this guy robert something he went to my school and it was one of the weird situations that, see when he went to school, he was a pure victim. Like people like picked on him, like bullied him and stuff like that. But he was a couple of years younger than me. So I was in sort of second year of uni and he came in as like a sort of 16 year old into McDonald's. And I think he was trying to maybe like clean slate. I'll try and be cool. And like, he was still a fucking dick, but he was a pure ponce. Like, mm. so... I've never took as many, well, so this is a lie, but up until that point, I'd never took as many drugs as what I did when I worked in fucking McDonald's, mate. Like, the place is rife with them. The guy that owned the place was a drug dealer. Wow. Um, He ended up in the fucking centre, spread his Sunday meal, get caught with 250 grand and 2 million quid worth of heroin and about oh his fucking jag, right? Colin Robertson, his name was. It's like, you could Google it. And then years later, he brought a fucking Chinese to my door as a delivery driver. But he went to jail, did like fucking five years in Berlin. He? He's a different type of Mr. Junk. <laughs> Aye, exactly, mate. He gave me my first Viagra. Oh, wow. He was just pure, you're a big man, you want to try Viagra? And just threw me like a wee fucking two, two tabs. I think we might have spoke about this before. Yes. In Deja Vu. Um, so we were on a night shift and we knew, we fucking knew, he's going to, as soon as people are rolling joints, he's going to be there. Pure geezer, draw that joint. So <laughs> we rolled a joint with tea bags. Oh, wow. Just tobacco, like Golden Virginia, and tea bags. And we were like, ah, Robert, here, we've rolled you your own joint so you don't need any points. And he was pure, oh, ha, 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 but thanks very much. And he was sitting smoking this joint. He was like, oh, fuck's sake, man, I'm still doing my fucking nut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we even told him. I don't think we even told him. We were just like, and on night, he was like, that joint was packed, man. Like, I'm fucking stoned. He was smoking fucking tea bags, fucking idiot. But placebo effect, mate. Also got a mate. Steaming on schlur. Do you know what schlur is? No. Non-alcoholic red wine. Wow. And when we were like 14 or 15, we got one of our mates pure steaming. 
feeding him cups of slur, and he, he was pure staggering about and all that. We were all like, "That's mad, isn't what that? a dick. That's <laughs> mad." I know, mate. Because I've I've felt like that when I've had non-alcoholic beers. I'm like, I feel a bit buzzy, man. But I know that it's no booze. Same with kombucha, I know. Sometimes I've had a couple of really strong kombuchas, and I've found myself like fucking gibbering shit a wee bit. What is kombucha? It's a fermented tea, right. and it, it is a bit boozy, but you can smell booze off it, but right. it's non-alcohol. There's no alcohol in it at no all, alcohol. or even what, a small amount, like a tiny amount? Well, I, th I think, see, because it's fermented, I don't know the science behind it, but I think there's a ten tiny amount because it's fermented, but right. you could get it to a baby. It's like, that's how non-alcoholic it is. Right, okay. But if you, I suppose if you left it, like, if you left apples, like they ferment, and uh -huh. that's cider into it, really. Aye, of course. But you, I guess like that. Do you like kombucha? I love kombucha. I used to drink it all the time. I thought it was good for you. But I was listening to, a, when I was fit, I was listening to a vegan podcast and supposedly it's not that good for you. It's not unhealthy for you. High but, caffeine? Um, I think there's caffeine, but people drink it for gut health reasons. And right. supposedly it's not that beneficial. Right, so similar to like kimchi and like pickle. Stuff that's fermented, basically, Aye. and vinegar. Um, that's good for your gut. And yeah. so a similar sort of thing with, with kombucha, but they're like, no, nah, it's not that good for you. Aye, they just found it. But don't get me wrong, it's like to, nice to have one as a treat. It's not bad for you. Right. But people will specifically drink it because they thought it was good for right. your gut health. The only thing I know about kombucha is the kombucha girl. Aye. You seen that TikTok? I think, was it a TikTok or a video where the, the lassie takes a sip of the... Um, I'll maybe bring it up on the screen, but she takes like a sip of the kombucha and she's like, oh, 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 oh. Aye. Uh, the kombucha girl, Aye. Brittany Browski, her name is. Aye. Um, her eyes are like popping out her head. Uh -huh. I never knew that was kombucha. Right. Aye. You know the meme, but. Aye, like, aye. Aye, 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 absolutely. The, some of the memes with that stuff is amazing, like Warm Bucky, all that type of shit. Aye. What's next on the, on the on list? The list? Yeah. Uh. <sighs> I get followed him the other night. Right. Why? Um, Glasgow Wildlife. To put <laughs> Glasgow it, Wildlife, right. To put it lightly. So where, where were you? What was going on? So I was meeting friends for a sober cup of tea and a chin wag. And we went for a McDonald's after it. Got to about 10 o'clock at night. It was really sunny as well. Still light. And I was like, I'm going to walk at him, man. I've had a McDonald's, feel a wee bit guilty, going to get a walk. Mm -hmm. And I, I am hypersensitive to my surroundings, by the way. Right. I don't know if it's a problem, but I I can judge a character instantly. I can walk into a pub and I can feel an energy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I don't like this. Let's go. I can always sense a fight before it's going to happen. I've always been like that. Mm -hmm. my, my mates know me for being like that. Even some stand-up comedians, like... There's some uh, stand-up comedians in Scotland that have been outed as fucking sex offenders, right? And I, be before that happened, I was like, ah, he's a cunt. Uh, something's no right with him. Everybody's like, ah, don't get me wrong, I never expected that. But uh, I was like, that guy's something. a cunt, I, I hate him. I'm, I'm the same. Hi. And it's, it's a symptom of uh, high anxiety and fight or flight, which I lived in, and I think, like, for well over a decade for the majority of my life but it's something that i've chosen to keep mm -hmm. because um i like that it's yeah. like it's like that's the sixth sense isn't it like you, you walk by somebody you take a look at their face and you're sort of like i'd need to watch myself with them Aye. and i think that's a superpower mate but that is a symptom of the fight or flight response like uh colors are more vibrant sound is more you, you're you're basically scanning your surroundings for danger at all times and you start to, patterns start to emerge in the brain. So like what you're talking about with these uh, stand-up comedians, they'll probably remind you, they're probably uncon unconscious, but they'll remind you of somebody mm -hmm. who has proven them. See, when you're younger and you're like shocked that people are bad or they do bad things, then as you get older, you're sort of like, I kind of knew that was going to happen. I, I knew something wasn't right with them. Yeah. It's because you're actually learning for these previous experiences and your fight or flight is sort of like making you hyper aware. That's so it's, called, it's called hyper awareness. Um, that's, yeah. that's cool, by the way. I never knew that. 
it kind of reminds me of my ma when something happens she's like i always knew he was bad like mm -hmm. old scottish grannies kind of say that it's the same way emotions mate i'm hyper i'm it's called hyper vigilance uh -huh. you're being vigilant but hyper awareness is like i think if you can learn to bring that down i think it becomes just hyper awareness but also makes you really compassionate because you're aware of how somebody's feeling like if you ever said something to somebody and you see a look in their face and you're like oh, fuck, man. do you know what i mean you, you think about it later you're like fuck, man i really like upset that person i used to do that constantly yeah so that That's makes you it makes you compassionate and empathetic well but like you're saying if there's something going on and you're like mm, mm -hmm. then you're like i need to watch myself here so if somebody's following you fucking home at night you're going to be like watch what the fuck's coming going to, what's going to happen here yeah. do you know what i mean i have had that with other circumstances i remember my mate phoned us once and straight away i was like what's wrong and he done that i was like what's wrong and his granddad was dying he was sick i was like i knew there was something wrong man i could just tell mm -hmm. with the tone of his voice instantly straight away yeah that can become disordered such as I've got a friend who told me a story about during during COVID. Every time the phone went and it was his ma, he would almost go into a panic attack. And I was like, "What? What were you imagining?" I was just imagining they were going to be. I was going to be picking up the phone while well, your dad's got COVID or something like that and they're old. Mm -hmm. So that becomes disordered. Different if you wait, right? Like you pick up the phone, you're like, "Oh, what's this?" You don't go into panic and then you hear the tone of the voice and you're like, what's wrong? I know something's wrong. That's that's good. That's a good use of sort of hypervigilance, but people become hypervigilant about like, what do they think of me? You know, oh, everybody's going to think I'm such and such because I'm wearing it and then it's like, no, now, now you're in like a disordered Aye. version of it. Well, mama's like that with me. Sometimes I phone her, she's like, what's that's happened? Right. Aye, and you're just like, nothing. I'm fucking be. lying in my farter watching Robocop. I just thought I'd phone you, man. Picking popcorn off your belly. Like that. <laughs> um, what's <laughs> happened? Like, I bought popcorns on my belly button. <laughs> it's so, weird that you were saying about being hypersensitive to colours and stuff, because when straight away I knew that the guy was going to do something. I was at the left-hand side of the street, and he was at the right-hand side of the street, and I could see him uh, slowly cross the road, but it was at a snail pace, <clears throat> and he was going in front of me. So I stopped walking straight away. I just stopped and I was like, I know he's going to do something. I know he's going to say something. So as he, that's me, as he was coming there, I stopped and then I crossed over the road to walk ahead. Mm -hmm. Maybe a minute later, I just heard, excuse me, excuse me. And I was like, here we fucking go. Turned run. I need to get back to govern, mate. I need to try and find my son. Is it cool if you give us 30 pence for a bus? I was like, look, mate, if I had change, I would give you change. But because everything's card, I don't have any change. If you go to 20p, I was like, no, mate, sorry. But he was like, he was very close to me to the point I was like, he's getting fucking near me, man. Mm. And that's when I, like, started to hear traffic, started to hear um, wind go through the trees like everything cars the colors of cars and all that everything became it was like an ecky just fucking dropped yeah, like mate. something like that uh -huh. and so at first i was scared but then the scaredness turned to like anger so i was like look mate i don't have anything and he, he started to keep walking in the middle of the road and then traffic was behind him beeping the horns and stuff in my head i was like thank fuck there's traffic there. Mm -hmm. I bought a bottle of, a glass bottle of Coca-Cola from this ice cream shop in Chorin somewhere, like full fat sugar. I was like looking forward to having a wee treat. So I walked ahead, grabbed the bottle, and I was like, if he comes anywhere near me, he's getting fucking smashed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not looking for trouble, but he's getting smashed if he touches me. Mm -hmm. And I just kept walking, and then I turned run. I mean, he was out of his mind like paralytic drunk so that that softened the scaredness because i felt like i could have probably just pushed him and he would have fell mm -hmm. do you know what i mean but i turned around he, 
I mean, it was quite comical as well because one time I turned around and he done that, like behind a motor, like so, <laughs> so cartoonish, but it was like so silly. Right, he's trying to hide. Aye, but it was like steaming. He was like tripping at his feet and all that. Like just there was nothing graceful about it. Uh -huh. And then there's a wee cut off uh, for where I stay. I turn left and then I need to go up a path. And I just kind of, at that point, I was full blown Charlie Bronson, Death Wish. I hope this cunt touches me because I'm going to kill him. Mm -hmm. And I just stood behind this wall. I was wearing my glasses, so I hope nobody's like, what the fuck is Bobby then hiding behind a wall? <laughs> but I was like stoning and I just waited. I waited for about a minute, two minutes, and he never came. But the cunt followed us. He flat out followed Aye, me. For, I think. I think I maybe hurt his ego a wee bit because I was just like, I've not got change, mate. And he just was offended. Aye. By well, so I think, like, if he's been after money, he's realised this cunt's getting any money on him. You know, like, I've been using my card all night, mate. I don't have any cash on me. It's like, you know, he's maybe just went, oh, there's no money there. Aye. You know what I mean? Um, that's the that's one of the most common ones that I've that the year that I need to get a bus to go and get my son or my daughter. You know what I mean? Pick my daughter up for school and and go and get change for the bus. And you're like, you need me on thirty p for a fucking bus, mate. Nowadays you need about fucking twenty quid to go on a bus. But see, like when you were talking there, I was, I was thinking like, well, I've been folied before, um, in the same way, and it's super intimidating. Uh huh. It's you get wielded out by it, man. You're like. Well, that's can not following me, man. Imagine if you were a woman. You took that's what I was gonna say. I phoned a couple of friends, I phoned my mum the next day, and I was like, Imagine if I were a young woman, like a 17 year old or something, like how scary would that be? Because I got to because he was very near my flat as well, by the way. Mm -hmm. It was probably about a hundred yards away from my flat. He was not that far away by the time I got away from him. I got home and got a shower, sitting on the couch with my cup of tea, mm -hmm. and I was like <sighs> Holy aye, fuck. the adrenaline's wearing off then. Aye. Uh, you're starting to be like, fucking hell, man. Aye. Aye, man. Poor lassies, man, in Glasgow, in Scotland. or it, You see it yourself, man. See when you're walking in the town or something, you just see, like, guys staring at women and stuff, and you're like, you know the woman, she knows that people are doing that. Aye, mate. And they I just seen, accept it. I mean, I see that all the time. I, 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 see, I go to the gym every day. I see it all the time. It is what it is, but... <laughs> I seen one the other day where I was like, fuck me, man. Like, the lassie must have been no older than like 21, 22, which means that she could have probably been about fucking 15 or 16 year old. Do you know what I mean? She was in the pure full gym attire. I think, like, if you're a guy, you're not going to notice, you know, you're not going to not notice that, right? That's part of your instinct. So you accept that. Doesn't mean that you're a fucking pervert, a pedophile, or whatever, right? She she was in shape, right? Let's just say she was fit. But mate, there was an old guy, man. He must have been about fucking 60 year old. And he was on one of the benches in Sucky Hall Street. And she walked past and he was just staring at her every single fucking step that she walked past him. I was like, fucking hell. And then he looked at me and was like, pure, oh, I big man. And I was just like, I just didn't even say it. I just didn't even react, man. I was like, mate, that's pretty fucking disgusting. Like, she's not wearing that gear for your attention. She's not wanting you to be fucking perving on her. Mm -hmm. And you're like a fucking... Mate, he's he was like, no. He's fucking head was spinning, trying to fucking just keep Aye. his eyes on her. It's like, what do you get for that? I it's like, also, have you never seen a, a good-looking woman? Like... Well, see, see to, be, to be in that regard, an old guy like that, I mean, they never got women like that when they were younger. Nobody was going to the gym. You know what I mean? Like, no, no young lassie was cutting about with fucking leggings that are riding up their arse and you can pretty much see everything. You know what I mean? Like, so on that, I understand, like, the, the instinctual, like, oh my God, look at her. But then you need to control yourself. Like, one, you're in public. Two, she doesn't want you fucking staring at her. Mm -hmm. And then what would compel you to look at another guy and be like, oh, oh aye. Hi. It's like, mate, you know Expecting what I mean? you to do that, oh. Exactly, mate. 
Exactly. Yeah, exactly. This is why I'm a member of this gym, my man. Aye, exactly. <laughs> we weren't even in the gym, mate. We were on Sucky Hall Street, just walking down the street. Last oh year, was just God. fucking walking down the street. The gym is a, is a different environment. I've had conversations with people in the gym. Um, I went up to a guy one time in the gym and was just like, you need to give that a buy because you could see the, the, the woman moving for fucking bit to bit in the gym and the guy following her. Um, and then... I, I, the final straw for me was is he went up and asked for her number and she was like, I'm not interested, mate. And then he just continued to just stare at her and I was like, there was a PT there. Um, this was years ago um, in the Cali gym at Cali University and there was a, a guy there and, and I was like looking at him, signaling and you know, like being like looking backwards and forwards at the situation and the guy just like walked away, which is maybe kind of understandable. It was a big guy and I just couldn't, I couldn't take it anymore, mate. I just went up to him. I was like, you need to fucking give that a buy, mate. She's not interested in you. And he was pure, he was like, fuck off. And I was like, no, I won't fuck off. I was like, you need to fucking, you're, a, that's the, you're intimidating her. She's coming here to work out and get fit and healthy. And you're fucking perving on her. And whilst you're approaching her. And she said, no, leave her alone. That's all you need to do, mate. Go on with your fucking workout. And he was pure, oh, fucking, oh, mad fucking blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, fuck up, mate. Like, what a funny. I just, Good on you, mate. Mate, I just always think, what if that was my sister? Yeah. What if that was my bub? It's happened to my, my missus a couple of times, mate. She's one of the mad fucking A-game freaks. Go up and approach her. You know what that is? Pick-up artists. Aye, aye. Like that fucking ADA game guy that ended up in the jail. Aye, aye. For, uh, I don't know what. The BBC Social did an undercover sting on him and he got done. Absolute asshole. Right, mate, guy's a prick, who used to go to my gym and was the biggest arsehole you would ever meet in your life. All right, big man. Fuck off, mate. I'm in the gym, mate. I don't want to fucking make pals with you. Go away. But obviously he's trying to recruit men, right, for his fucking mad A-game business or whatever. But she'd one of the guys approach her. And it was at, again, it was at the sort of mid bit at Sucky Hall Street, see where the cost of coffee is. And he was sitting on a bench. And she was just walking down the street and he was pure, all right, what's your name? And just that pure balls out, like intimidation, basically trying to intimidate women into bed. Um, and she ended up getting into the cost of coffee and she went up to the counter and was basically like, I'm getting followed and harassed by this guy. And he walked into the Costa and, he, and the, to be fair, like she phoned me, but I was busy. And um, to be fair to the Costa Coffee guys, a couple of the guys were basically like, you need to leave. And when he was leaving, he was pure, you fucking slut. And all that type of stuff, mate. See if she, see if I'd have picked up that phone, I'd have murdered that cunt, mate. I'd have broke his fucking neck. Yeah. I'd have just went, I think I'd have just ran up and he'd butted him or something, man. Like, because when I heard about what had happened, I was like raging, man. I had like rage in my eyes. I was like, oh my fucking God. There's a part of me that's like pure, I hope we see that cunt one day. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, just you move out the road. And just be like, all right, mate, how you doing? What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? Just follow him down the street and just be like, you fucking prick. People like that need slap, though. I actually seen a team of them once at the same bit outside Buchanan Galleries. They, they hang about there Aye. between the Tesco Extra that at the Marks and Spencers in the mid bit of Sucky Hall Street and the Donald Dewar yeah. down to the sort of Apple store. And they just walk up and down all day, mate walk up and do an audit and they wait for women that are by themselves and they go up and they introduce themselves and blah, blah, blah. And they talk their way into these women's beds. Like, I think when you watch the BBC documentary, a lot of the women were like, I felt like I had no choice but to say yes. That to me is fucking disgusting, man. Yeah. Like, what What do you gain for that? What do you get for that? Yeah. Like, I want, if I'm going to have sex with a woman, I want to be wanted. Yes. I want them to like me. You know what I mean? Plus so, sex is not that fucking good, man. Like, that you need to... I would disagree with that. Follow people up the street well, and be aye, a fucking I wouldn't, pest. Aye, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't resort to what is, you know, like, probably one step away from rape. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think that guy, ADA game, actually got done for rape because they had video evidence that he put on his YouTube. A, one of the women specifically saying I, I, I need you to wear a condom and then a pic, like a video of him like taking it off yes so he get done for that there's a term for that in there people that lie about wearing condoms i mean i don't, and know. I don't know what it's i'm that's sure there's a term right. for that it just changed by a law recently right that's like illegal two or three years ago 
um, and you can get done. I don't know if it's cut. I don't know if it's rape, but it is like, you know, serious sexual assault, like exactly. a form of, form of sexual assault. Aye. See if there's any guy like I don't. I don't. I feel compelled to say this. See if there's any guy that listens to this that thinks that I'm gonna go and watch YouTube things to learn how to pick up women. Do you know what you need to do to learn how to pick up women? Be nice, improve your life, and actually be attractive. Yeah. You don't need to intimidate women into having a one night stand with you. And what do you get for that anyway, man? Other than like a pure hollow sense of like, I, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just fucking weird. It's a, that's a weird one for me. Maybe that guy that followed me him was trying to a game me. You really like that? Probably. Ah, he's moved in. <laughs> rent in a room after me. You got his banger out. <laughs> Aye, he's hoffing rent. Right, so I've not really got any kind of... I've not got much more to cover, but since... I'll say something funny, right? I mean, I've got a couple of more things, but we'll, we'll fire through it. Russell Brand has started doing cold water therapy. He's been at it a while, I'm sure. Has he? Aye. He did a he did a podcast with Wim Hof. Oh, did he? Right, okay. Uh -huh. so I seen a video then. the other night. Right. Oh my god. What was he doing? Well, I was lying on the couch watching the telly, <laughs> got distracted by my phone, and I was just like, all my justification of hatred is completely normal. He was just in a nice tub in his garden. Do you not like Russell Brand? I don't like him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Cold water therapy's got a lot to play in that. I don't know. I think he's quite dodgy, mate. There's something about him. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Me Too thing about him. Uh, well, I think he's outed himself on on some of the fronts. Yeah, hasn't he? I think he's a very talented actor, very funny comedian, but he's went down this weird. Uh, he's like a diluted version of Jim Carrey, but not. Uh, good. He's been doing this almost Messiah complex thing. Yeah. Hasn't he? He's like Jordan Peterson, but for like hippies. I and also like see with Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. That's a free program, right? With twelve steps to help anybody. Mm -hmm. If I'm an alcoholic, I go into that place and get help from a fellow alcoholic. Mm -hmm. When I've improved my life, then I help another alcoholic. Right? Shouldn't it cost you any money? Mm -hmm. Sh shouldn't it get you charged? Anything? It's all free. He's took those twelve steps. And he's wrote a book about it. Aye. And he's making money from that. Mm -hmm. So I disagree with that. Aye. Yeah. Um, big time. Aye, he's a recovered addict. Like, I can understand why you're like, yeah. why you... What was that book called? Can't remember. But it, it, I read it. I remember, I read it, like, maybe 2019, something like that. Aye. I read it, and it was just, he just talked about the 12 steps. Yeah. Um... I'm not, I mean, I'm a psychologist and psychotherapist, so I feel like I've got, and I help addicts, like, I feel like I've got a, I've got like a sort of point of reference with this. I'm not a big fan of the 12 steps. No. No, because I think it's missing the 13th step. I think there needs to come a point where you stop identifying yourself as an addict and every day doesn't need to be a struggle. You know, it, does that make sense to you? I think that there are, other things out there. What I think is is missing is like the evolution of the twelve steps, yes. where they take it to this new. Like you, you let people leave the baggage behind because the fear of the addict. Why does somebody continue with it for the the rest of their life? Is that well, if I don't keep vigilant, then I will go back. And it's like. I've seen so many people where that's not true. Well, they can like go, do you know what? I don't need to like police myself or treat myself like a child in my mind. Uh -huh. I can be like, I'm a fully grown adult and I can do what I like and I have a choice. I'm choosing not to rather than being like, I need to, like all or nothing thinking, like I need to be sober. I, I need to be, you know, and, and then a lot of people end up with like the coin thing and like the gain the medals. I love it. Um, but a lot of people bullshit their way through that, mate. Like, they've got the, you know, nine months clean and they're not. They've relapsed through that. And I'm just like, um, I, I think there, there's something about it. And I also think it's really heavily tied towards Christianity. 
Yes. And religion, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, Higher power, God of your own understanding. It is. Uh-huh. There's a term in the fellowship uh, called, I nearly giggled there when you said the fair team step. There's a term in the recovery called the fair team step. And it's right. pretty disgusting, actually. It's I've had moments of going into recovery and then walking away and stuff. Essentially, a fair team step is when there's a woman that goes into recovery and in early recovery when she's struggling and trying to find recovery and trying to get sober there will be men or a woman that will take advantage of them and have sex with them and it's called the 13th step so sometimes i've been to meetings and i've heard people say watch him he's a 13th stepper and they'll try to be like you know, the cold water fairy pay. Oh, just do the cold water fairy pay. Do this and do that. It'll be cool. Um, I'll pick you up. I'll take you to meetings. I'll drop you off and all that. And it's just all one goal of taking advantage. Mate, that is that is nearly almost every guy on Instagram and out there being like, do this and do that. See when I meet them, and it's just Glasgow centric, I suppose. They're all after their fucking that king, mate. Every one of them. There's one in particular, and I won't name him, where I heard a story where he told one of his clients, now he's a intuitive, he does like readings and, you know, like, he's a bullshitter. Like, ultimately, the guy's a fucking liar. Like, you can tell he's lying. I've had him in the studio, and, and I've never shared anything that he's really done, so need will like, be able to go and like, dig on that. But I can tell that he's full of shit. It's all pure big smiles and yes you know it's all lies mate i can tell that he's getting demons man you can fucking tell it yeah um and i heard a story from a, a female friend who um i met and we were, i was just like there's something about this guy that i just can't i can't get on board with and she was like i went for a reading and he told me to leave my boyfriend and then asked did i want to go for a week in a caravan and take mushrooms and i was just pure wow i was like right okay so the guy's stick is just taking advantage of vulnerable people vulnerable women and see as somebody who is like that is my worst nightmare see if i did that right see somebody came to me vulnerable with their mental health and i used the the co- the confidence in me and the relationship that i would build through them with them through the therapeutic process to then move it into another thing which by the way i could do very very easily i've i've picked up on that a few times where i'm like i could take advantage here but that's me being like don't fucking dare like now's the time to start winding the therapeutic relationship down it's maybe becoming codependent and transference is happening and all this sort of stuff um especially when people are like hypersexual and had sexual assault in their past and all this sort of stuff and they tell me their secrets um that's my worst nightmare for myself and, and it enrages me when I see it happening because I'm like in my head like don't ever fucking do that yeah so there's like when I see people like that I'm like I get I get angry at it where I'm just yeah. like I can't but what can what can I do about it do you know what I mean like and as far as I know nobody's made any complaints about the guy but I've heard just a couple of stories where I'm like my red flags are fucking yeah. flying high here because you know it'll come though probably eventually mate, probably mate aye probably it will come Aye. all you can do is just keep being you i mean i remember a friend got in touch with me a beautiful woman right absolutely stunning like fucking she looks like a, an angel stunning and she told me that she was struggling with alcohol and uh she was like i want to go to meetings my first response in my brain was she's gonna get fucking eat alive so i had to phone female friends that were in recovery I had to say to them, this is a horrible conversation, but we know what's going to happen. Um, you just need to res- surround yourself with her. You just need to take her to female meetings. You need to take her to gay meetings as well, which is safe, which is a, a safe place. Fair team stepping can be that bad that women will go to gay meetings to get recovery uh-huh. and avoid regular meetings. So for the first kind of while of her recovery, she was going to gay places and and female uh, uh meetings mm-hmm. and she did say you know 
when I first spoke to you, I thought you did. It was a wee bit of an overreaction, but now being in recovery for a year, I understand. She's like, I totally get it. So, pretty horrific, isn't it? Aye, mate. That's fucking... I mean, I didn't know that that was the 13th step. Yes. You know what I mean? Very, very common, mate. It's heartbreaking. There's a lot of things with Bill W as well. I think he... I don't know if this is 100% sure, but I think he tried to make a 13 step. He was mad for acid and psychedelic drugs. Right. And he said in early recovery that it helped him. I think 100% yep. that's true, mate. And I think he tried to add to that, to the structure. And I mean, that, that could away. be it now, because psychedelics are now being researched in the, the, the psychedelic centre in LA, fucking, there's one in London, and there's one, they're, they're popping up everywhere, and they're looking at how the holistic healing power of psilocybin, MDMA, and all sorts of stuff that we don't really understand, and they'll maybe abused in a sort of party sense, so... Well, um, if they need human guinea pig, pigs, me and Paul will do it. Mate, I'm pretty much a fucking human guinea pig at this point. As long as you don't smoke the shite, uh, like my pal God. <laughs> imagine that. Imagine it. Imagine <laughs> they smoked the roll up and it was like a fucking DMT hit, man, and the hamster shite <laughs> took him to like a new fucking plane. He came back pure. <laughs> oh, I'm so woke now. Like, Or m imagine like if I was in the swimming one day and I, I seen him for the first time in 15 years. I'm like, mate, you all right? His eyes were all squinting and all that. It's never been the same since I smoked that roll up. I'm scared of hamsters. I can't. When I hear a squeak, I can't. I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> He's on a permo. Aye. So I think we've done an hour. We'll, Aye, mate. we'll wrap up. There's a quick thing that I feel like I just need to say it because it's quite funny. I don't know why I've put it down. I've got Dustin Hoffman and Tootsie or Robin Williams and Mrs. Doubtfire. If you had to pump one of them, which one would it be and why? Tootsie. Tootsie. Aye. 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 Fucking. And I think that's because if you ever seen, <laughs> have you ever seen, uh, well, first of all, Robin Williams is a gorilla. Yes. So I don't know if, I don't think he was waxing himself. I think he just went for the full gorilla mm -hmm. underneath that suit. But have you ever seen the horror trailer I Mrs. Doubtfire? No. Have you not? I'm going to take a note of that because that sounds amazing. So basically somebody's like done took the audio off of the trailer of Mrs. Doubtfire and turned it into a fuck, or maybe even just made it, like, for the footage, and they've made it a horror movie, and it's terrifying. Amazing. It's fucking terrifying, mate. So, I look at Mrs. Doubtfire like the fucking nanny in Omen now. Wow. And I'm just like, <laughs> P post-traumatic stress. How fucked up is that movie, but? It's very fucked up. If that happened in real life, he'd be in jail. They kids. Sectioned. Especially that way, Ian. Yes. Especially the way that it was revealed. <laughs> Aye. I mean, I, I'd pump Tootsie because Dustin Hoffman's a ride in that, right? Sexy as fuck. If I had a come down or a hangover, it would be Mrs. Doubtfire because I'm like, she would be very caring. <laughs> She'd make me a nice dinner. <laughs> yeah, cuddle. Aye. But Tootsie's just a one night stand. So on that note, uh, that <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll we'll wrap up the podcast. Paul, thank you very much Not for cool, for chatting, mate. I do feel like sometimes we go from a comedian doing a podcast to you're just my therapist mm -hmm. for fucking forty minutes. <laughs> People seem to enjoy it, mate. People seem to enjoy it. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Mister Junk, this week's sponsor, Ross. His details will pop up on the screen. If you've got any junk, any rubbish, garden waste, anything that you can't lift, if your granny's too old and she's not got a car, give Mr. Junk a call. He'll turn up at the house and he'll clean it out. Don't worry about it. He'll sort you out. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. It means a lot. I want to thank everybody that came to Greenock. I know I had a wee moan there, but the gig was amazing. The staff at the Greenock Art Centre, Beacon Centre, was amazing. So, if you're listening to this podcast, I know a lot of people message me and say it's a good podcast, but if you could like it, review it, and like subscribe on YouTube, it's keeping us alive. And see if you're in a WhatsApp group with your mates and stuff, fucking send the link in and just say it's a good podcast. Your support means a lot. I love yous very much. 
and I'm going to go and watch Footsie and have a wank. Ah, ruined another podcast.